Do you like golf swings that aren't the norm? Do you like things that aren't the norm on the course? Are you inspired by Jim Furyk? If so, we have some good news. This week at the Shriners Children's Open, Patrick Welch shows off one of the craziest swings you'll ever see. You see, Welch does things on the course a little bit differently. He doesn't hold the club like most people do, with the trail hand below the lead hand. Instead, he does the opposite, kicking a soft cross-handed college player to make PGA Tour debut. The players in this week's Shriners Children's Open at TPC Summerlin may seem pretty average, but one player's cross handed grip is sure to make a big difference. Patrick Welch, who is a senior at the University of Oklahoma in his fifth year, doesn't have to go to class this week. But what makes him different from other competitors is the way he holds the shot. According to a 2021 article in Golf Digest, Welch started holding his clubs that way because that's how he held a baseball bat. Then, he kept the grip even though people told him not to. The 22-year-old has been named to two All-American teams, and after winning the Southern Highlands Collegiate in Las Vegas in March, which gave him an exemption, it's hard to argue that his his decision to stick with the grip hasn't paid off. Welch isn't the only PGA Tour player to try a cross-handed grip. He also wears two gloves. Matt Fitzpatrick, the winner of the U.S. Open, is known for chipping with his left hand instead of his right. Welch's career is just getting started, but if he has even half the success of the world number 10 in the years to come, he will have made the right choice. Welch is just happy to be competing this week for the time being. After his win, which got him into this week's tournament without having to pay, he told Golf Week, I don't think I've ever felt this way. I've wanted to get to the PGA Tour ever since I started playing golf. To have this chance means everything. Next up, let's talk about the PGA Tour to Las Vegas. What comes first? The PGA Tour stop in Las Vegas will always be best known as the place where Tiger Woods won his first professional tournament. On October 6, 1996, six weeks after winning his third straight U.S. amateur title, a young Tiger Woods quickly lived up to the hype in Las Vegas. He beat Davis Love III in a playoff to win his first big check. Woods would win 81 more times on the PGA Tour but he would only come to Las Vegas once more. He went back to defend his title in 1997, but he tied for 37th place. In 1983, Las Vegas became a regular stop on the PGA Tour, and from the start, it had the biggest prize money on the tour. In 1983, the first year of the Panasonic Las Vegas Pro Celebrity Classic, there was a $750,000 prize pool. Fuzzy Zoller won the first tournament and took home a check for $135,000. The Tournament Players' Championship came in second in 1983 with a 700 thousand dollar prize. The players are the most important tournament on the PGA Tour. It now has the biggest purse, $20 million, and the biggest first place prize, $3.6 million, not counting the FedEx Cup playoffs. In 1984, Vegas was the first tour event to have a prize pool of more than $1 million. The exact amount was $1,122,500. In that year, Dennis Watson won and got $162,000 as a prize. When Woods won $297,000 in Vegas in 1996, it was the 14th highest prize on the tour. The Shriners Children's Open in 2022 will be played on a par 71 course at TPC Summerlin, which was designed by Bobby Weed and Frank Urban Fuzzy Zoller Jr. The course will be 7,255 yards long. There have been 12 different host sites in Las Vegas. Some of these golf courses are no longer open. Kevin Na had to drop out of the Shriners Children's Open in 2021 because he hurt his rib. Since he switched to the Live Golf Series, he can't play in 2022. Bryson DeChambeau, who beat Patrick Cantley by one shot to win in Las Vegas in 2018 is also a member of Live Golf and isn't allowed back. Greg Norman, the CEO and public face of Live Golf, won the PGA Tour's Vegas stop in 1986 when it was called the Panasonic Las Vegas Invitational. It was the third of his 20 PGA Tour wins. As the PGA Tour heads to Las Vegas, Live Golf in Bangkok. After four tournaments in the U.S. in a row, Live Golf is sending its best players abroad for the first time since its first event in London. Since its first tournament, a lot has changed. The Live Golf event in Bangkok, Thailand in 2022 will have a much stronger field and teams that work better together. Four Aces GC, which is led by Live Boston winner Dustin Johnson, is in the lead. The number 23 player in the world has done very well in Live Golf, winning in Boston and coming in second in Chicago and Bedminster. He also has two other top 10 finishes. Johnson is in first place in the season-long race with a total of 118 points and a 39-point lead over Brandon Grace, who is in second place. Cameron Smith, who won Live Golf Chicago is in third place. He will try to keep his momentum going in Bangkok so he can close the gap between himself and Johnson. The champion golfer of the year is still ranked third in the world, making him the best player in the field. Even though Smith won by four strokes in Chicago, his all-Australian team, Punch GC, could only tie for third in the team competition. The four aces have won four straight tournaments, and Smith's team, as well as Smash GC and the High Flyers, will try to stop them. Live Golf Bangkok is the first step toward Live Golf becoming a global tour 
Tour. It takes place on a brand new golf course in a part of the world that golf fans rarely get to see. Moving on, Live Golf's attempted backdoor to world rankings points under review as OWGR considers MENA Tour request. Even though Live Golf tried to find a way for its players to get points on the official world golf rankings by partnering with the little-known MENA Tour, it is still not allowed to do so for now. In a statement released on Thursday, the OWGR said it will look at what has happened before making a decision, but that the review won't be done until after the next two live events. The MENA Tour, Middle East and North Africa Tour, is a new league with purses of $75,000. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, it hasn't had many events. It is not on the list of important tours around the world, but people who do it can earn OWGR points. Live Golf has 54 whole tournaments with no cuts, so it hasn't been able to get OWGR points. This week, it made a strategic alliance with the MENA Tour, which is a tour in the Middle East and North Africa. The idea that Live Golf came up with is for the MENA Tour to put on live tournaments as limited field events under its name. This would allow live golfers to get OWGR points since many of them left the PGA Tour for the guaranteed money that the Saudi Arabia-backed league offered. With OWGR points, golfers can stay in the world rankings and get into major tournaments. OWGR said that they are doing a review. They then said, only after the review is done will a decision be made about giving points to the MENA Tour's new limited field tournaments. The MENA Tour defines limited field tournaments as any MENA Tour approved tournament with fewer than 80 players. Well, in some ways, this was a smart attempt by Liv to skirt the rules outlined by the OWGR. Sports Illustrated says that the best players on the MENA Tour can join the Asian Tour, and the best players on the Asian Tour can play in future Liv events. The OWGR generally requires OWGR affiliated leagues to have mobility, and moving from the MENA Tour to the Asian Tour and then into Liv Golf would give tours mobility that didn't seem to exist when Liv started. It's complicated, but there is a way to get there. Phil Mickelson told SI, I think from a player standpoint, it feels great to have everyone at Live fighting so hard for the players and their best interests. I think this is a great way for the world golf rankings to keep its credibility and keep politics out of the decision-making process. I think it will be good for everyone. This is not a no, but it is not what Liv wanted to hear from the OWGR. Still, Liv is trying to get OWGR points in a number of creative ways. As time goes on and more of the picture comes into focus, it seems like they could get them more than ever. The way to do that is still unknown. It could be through the MENA Tour or the Asian Tour, or they could just change their format and structure to better fit the rules of the OWGR. But given the quality of the players on the Live team, it would be strange if things didn't work out in the end, one way or another. Unfortunately, guys, that is all the time we had for today. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Till next time, cheers!